Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Should owning a dog be illegal? On today's episode of Thinking in English, I'm going to try to explain why I think that owning certain types of dog, in particular purebred and flat-faced dogs, is cruel and should not be allowed. Let's learn about the history of dog breeds and the serious problems modern dogs experience, all while learning new vocabulary and practicing your listening comprehension. You can find the full transcript of this episode on the Thinking in English blog. It's completely free and in the link in the description. Uh, head over to my Instagram page, Thinking in English podcast, for more great content. And leave a like, rating, review or follow wherever you are listening right now. Here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. Opinionated. Opinionated. An opinionated person is certain about their beliefs and expresses their ideas strongly and often. As in, he was opinionated and selfish, but undeniably clever. To breed. To breed. To keep animals for the purpose of producing young animals in a controlled way. For example... Some dogs were bred to retrieve birds shot during hunting trips. Breed, breed. A particular type of animal or plant. For instance, what's your favourite breed of dog? Characteristic, characteristic. A typical or noticeable quality of someone or something. As in, having a big nose is a characteristic in my family. To bark. To bark. When talking about a dog, to bark means to make a loud, rough noise. As in, I can hear a dog barking outside. To herd to herd, to make animals move together as a group. For example, farmers use dogs to help herd sheep. Stocky, stocky. A stocky person or animal is short, wide across the chest and strong looking. For example, he was stockier than I remembered. Squashed, squashed. Flat, soft or out of shape due to being crushed or squeezed. For example, he ate some squashed sandwiches for lunch. A few weeks ago, I received an Instagram message from a listener of Thinking in English who wanted me to discuss some more controversial topics and in a more opinionated way. So, I thought I'd start with a topic that probably affects some of you. Pet dogs. Here is my controversial opinion. I think owning and breeding certain types of dogs should be illegal. Let me clarify this and be more specific. In particular, I think owning purebred dogs should be banned. Now, you might be thinking, what is a purebred dog? What does that mean? Well, a purebred dog is a dog from a family of completely the same breed. For example, a purebred Labrador has parents that were both Labradors, grandparents that were all Labradors, great-grandparents that were Labradors, and so on. In contrast, if a dog is bred from two different breeds of dog, it is described as a mixed breed. 
Many of you probably own a dog or have owned a dog in the past. And there is quite a high chance that you own a purebred dog. There are literally hundreds of different purebred dog breeds found in all corners of the world. Think about the Afghan Hound, the Akita Inu from Japan, the Alaskan Husky from North America, the Australian Cattle Dog, or the Austrian Shorthaired Pincher. These breeds come from completely different parts of the world, and I just looked at the letter A on the list of purebred dogs. Something you may not necessarily know, however, is that dog breeds are not natural. The Husky, the Akita Inu, and the Australian Cattle Dog did not evolve naturally. They were designed and bred by humans. Our ancestors chose dogs with certain physical characteristics that they found useful, bred them together, and created modern dog breeds. The story of how wolves and dogs transformed from wild animals to modern pets is not completely understood, but I'll tell you one popular theory. In early history, wolves or early dogs were likely attracted to human settlements by leftover food. Over years, a relationship between humans and early dogs was forged. Humans would allow them to eat the rotting food, and the dogs would help keep the village clean. The dogs would live at the edge of the village and also helped provide security by barking whenever an animal or strange human approached the houses. We don't really know how dogs moved from the edge of the village to inside the houses of our ancestors, but somehow they managed to make that move. And once they were living side by side with humans, humans began to influence how the dogs evolved. Dogs can have a lot of puppies, and our, en- uh, our ancestors likely kept only the dogs with the most useful characteristics. For example, at first maybe only the strongest puppies or the puppies with the loudest barks would be kept because these were the best at scaring off other animals. As dogs became more common and closer to humans, the characteristics they were bred for became more specific. Some dogs were bred to be excellent hunters, fast and aggressive. Others were bred to herd animals, meaning they were chosen for their ability to listen to commands, obey humans and not attack animals. Most of the breeds we know today, however, have their origins in the 19th century. Rather than just keeping hunting dogs, lap dogs or herding dogs, people began to trace the bloodlines of dogs and concentrate on developing specific breeds. And this was especially common in the United Kingdom. The Victorians, as the British were known at the time, were influenced by the work of Charles Darwin and motivated to breed the perfect version of a certain breed. Some breeders wanted smaller dogs, dogs with squashed faces, dogs with stocky uh, stocky bodies. Just compare pictures of bulldogs, Dachshunds or German shepherds from the beginning of the 20th century with now. They have changed dramatically. Purebred dogs in particular are now bred to meet certain standards. However, Breeding purebred dogs has had a number of serious consequences for today's animals. Selectively choosing characteristics for breeding has created painful and deadly health conditions that are now passed on through new generations of dogs. While searching for the perfect or ideal appearance of dogs, humans have created severe health problems. In fact, according to Time magazine, one in four purebred dogs has serious genetic problems. Furthermore, in trying to breed the perfect dog, 
There is the common issue of inbreeding, breeding dogs from the same family together, brothers and sisters, or fathers and daughters, mothers and sons. This is incredibly unhealthy and dangerous and leads to a whole variety of genetic issues and disabilities. Earlier this year, Norway banned the breeding of purebred English Bulldogs and King Charles Spaniels due to health concerns. The UK is also considering banning breeding of pugs and similar dogs. Let me give you some examples of medical issues commonly faced by popular breeds. English Bulldogs have been bred to have flat faces and excess skin because people think it's cute, I guess. However, flat faces have caused breathing problems. The excess skin causes infections and their small bodies commonly suffer cancer. In fact, Bulldogs are no longer able to give birth naturally, or most of the time they can't give birth naturally, as their heads are too big and their hips are too narrow. German Shepherds are an incredibly popular dog. However, in trying to create the perfect looking German Shepherd, the dogs now regularly suffer from blindness, hip problems, over eight different heart conditions and knee pain. And Poodles another very popular breed, are incredibly cute, but now commonly suffer from vision loss, diabetes, seizures and breathing problems. Perhaps the best example of medical problems caused by selective breeding is the pug. Pugs are loved by people all over the world for their cute faces and small bodies. But in my opinion, buying a pug is actually cruel. A recent study from the UK suggests that pugs face such serious health conditions that they can no longer be considered a typical dog from a health perspective. Let me just say that again. The health of pugs is so bad that they can no longer be considered a typical dog. We have changed them so far that they are no longer normal. In the UK, Pugs are twice as likely as other dogs to experience health issues. And the reason is quite simple. You just have to look at the animal. Over the past 200 years, the pug has been bred to have a smaller head and skull and a tiny body. But the pug's brain and other parts of its like, in- insides are still the same size. Their brain is squashed into a tiny head, and so is much of the rest of their body. Their body. If you think of a pug, you probably imagine a cute smiling face with their tongues always sticking out. In fact, the image on the blog, uh, the, the main image on the blog, is of a pug doing just that, looking happy with a tongue sticking out. But the truth is, pugs struggle to breathe and are forced to use their mouths instead of their noses. That's why their tongue is sticking out. They can't breathe through their noses. And you probably think their skin folds are attractive. But having too much skin is a really big problem. It can lead to lots of different types of infections. People love pugs' small tails, the small little curly tails. The curly tail is actually a deformed spine bone that can result in severe back problems. And pugs also suffer from a wide variety of other illnesses, especially heart problems. These health issues are so common and severe in pugs that there are suggestions that the dog should be banned. Many people consider it to be cruel to own a pug. These animals live their lives in constant pain. Moreover, according to the president of the British Veterinary Association, vets now strongly recommend that potential owners do not buy brachycephalic breeds such as pugs. Brachycephalic just means pugs or uh, bulldogs, dogs with squashed faces, basically, flat-faced dogs. In a Guardian article from a few years ago, 
A vet told of the first time his university class was shown a picture of a pug's skull. Most of the students thought the dog had been involved in a car crash or born with a severe deformation. All of the bones where the the front of the face, where the nose should have been, were missing or in the wrong place. The truth was that it's just a regular pug. And that same vet talked about how the only time an English bulldog can breathe well is when a vet uses an oxygen oxygen tube during an operation. Bulldogs are quite famous for having blue gums. You might think that's interesting or cute, but it's because they can't breathe enough oxygen. While pugs are the most extreme example, so many other purebred dogs struggle with numerous serious health complications. These dogs are born into a life of pain and health health problems, all because humans want these cute dogs. Because humans want small, cute dogs like Dachshunds or French Bulldogs, or elegant large dogs like German Shepherds and Labradors, we have caused a great deal of suffering to our modern pets. So what does all of this mean? Should it be illegal to buy a purebred dog? Well, I don't think all dogs should be banned, right? I'm not against owning a pet dog. But I do think we need to stop dangerous breeding practices and discourage people from buying purebreds like pugs. Vets in the UK already discourage people from buying dogs with flat faces. When it comes to buying a dog, we should be focusing on the health of the animal rather than the desires of the owner. Just because you think the small heads, flat faces and stocky bodies of certain dogs are cute does not mean we should keep producing sick and deformed animals. Why do people buy pugs? Well, it's for the big eyes, the squashed faces, the curly tails and the small bodies. But these are the exact same things that cause pugs a lifetime of suffering. On the other hand, most dog owners buy their pets with good intentions. So rather than punishing owners, we should be regulating and punishing the companies that breed and sell purebred dogs. On today's episode of Thinking in English, I have discussed an important but controversial topic, pet dogs. The dogs we know and love today are not natural animals, but have been created through generations of breeding. Humans think some dogs' small bodies, curly tails, big eyes and short legs are attractive. But these are the same things that cause massive pain and suffering to certain breeds. I believe that we need to ban the breeding and selling of certain purebred dogs. We need to think about the health of the dog rather than the desires of the owner when it comes to breeding dogs. And when it comes to buying or getting a dog, you could consider a dog with a healthier genetic history, maybe a a mixed dog. But what do you think? Should certain dog breeds like pugs and bulldogs be banned? Do you own a dog? Do you think it is cruel to own a flat-faced dog? I'd be really curious to know your opinions on this topic because I'm sure many of you listening own a dog, have a dog. So let me know what you think. Let me know if, if you thought about the health problems of your pets before you bought them. You can leave a comment on the blog, thinkinginenglish.blog, or on Spotify in the comment bit, or uh, you can send me a message on Instagram, I guess. And while you're over on Instagram, leave me a follow. We're getting closer and closer to 5,000 followers, I think. Let's try and get 5,000 followers on Instagram by the end of the summer. And, well, I just want to say thank you so much. We finally reached 1,000 five-star ratings on Spotify which is absolutely incredible. It puts me as one of the one of the top 
English language or English learning podcast, which is absolutely amazing. I, I can't I can't believe it. Um, and if you'd like to donate or support the podcast, you can do. There's a link in the description, or you can head over to the blog. Um, if you haven't rated the podcast, make sure you do on Spotify. Let's try and become the most popular English learning podcast in the whole world. That would be incredible. And what else? Well, just have a good week, I guess. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. <laughs>